hello, my friend. My name is Terry Petrovic, and for the past 25 years, I've been teaching, coaching, and training people how to create home-based businesses and how to create a better quality of life. You know, today I created a lifestyle that most people could only dream about, but it hasn't always been that easy. Um, I believe that success and prosperity has a lot to do with our philosophies, our programming at the conscious and even subconscious level. And the reality of it is, is from time to time, we need to seek counsel and get advice from people who are where we want to be. Uh, I've created a series, and I call this series Prosperity in the Mentors. And I pulled some of the best people on the planet uh, in our profession who have created massive success for themselves. And I think you'll be surprised on where they've come from and what they've been able to create. Now, my intention is to take you behind the curtain. So you get the, the truth uh, on how they handled the struggles, how they created the abundance, the prosperity, and created the quality of life that we all want. Now, my guest today is a 33-year-old college dropout who actually lives in Scottsdale, Arizona today with her two fur babies, her bulldogs, Lulu and Pepper. She started the network marketing business venture back when she was 21 and failed forward fast for several years. And until somebody told her to start generating leads online. Well, after lots of coaching and mentoring and really investing in herself in a big, big way, she went from MLM flunky to earning four, over four and a half million dollars in just the last seven years. She's super passionate about helping people uh, build their businesses based on their own God-given talents and, and using her platform as a way to give back to the community. Over the past several years, she's been actively involved in organizations building orphanages and homes in third world countries, and she's super passionate about raising awareness around rehabilitation for the youth trapped in human trafficking. My guest today is the lovely and talented Rachel Jackson. Hey, RJ, thanks for being here. Terry, I'm so excited. Let's do this. Well, let me, let's just start out a little bit about you know how you went from flunky to superstar. What's your story? You know, it's so funny. I, I think back to it's now been over 12 years in this industry. And I, I had a very similar experience to many others where I was initially introduced to network marketing by my husband. And I was so skeptical. I was the hater spouse that said, good luck with that thing. And I was embarrassed every time he'd be prospecting people in front of us. And I'd be like, oh my God, they don't want to hear about that. And then he started bringing home checks. And so that's a little first nugget for you guys. If you want to get your hater spouse on board, go create a result. And he started bringing them like two to four. I remember $800 a week. And that was more than I was making full time in retail management. And so it caught my attention while well, he dragged me down to a Saturday type of meeting and where I got to see guys on stage two, three times my age, a lot less hair on their head. And they were telling their stories and they're making 30 grand a month. And at that point I was making 3000 a month in retail full time. So my mindset was even if I failed their income by 90%, I'd still be making the same amount of money. Meaning if I just did 10% of it right, but I could not do my two and a half hour a day commute to my job, not have to work with a bipolar boss and I could work from home. And as an introvert, that sounded really great. I, I fell in love with leverage. That first four and a half years, I joke and I say it was my not-for-profit network marketing business. Um, you know, there I, I worked really hard, but I, somehow I could never really get my results and team into like crazy momentum. And uh, and I was in a service business, and I kind of fell bass backwards, if you will, into that company because my husband had joined. But my true passion was wellness, so I switched to products about four and a half years later. And I think that that is a little bit of a testimony because. When you're passionate about something, when you feel very purposeful, you bring a totally different energy, excitement, belief to it. And, um, and because I had done so much work that previous four and a half years, building a following, building authority, building leadership, building myself, building marketing, advertising, entrepreneurial type of skills, then when I went into my second company, um, you know, we just had the right team, the right message, and we just created some really great results. And over the last... In you know, seven years, our team has done probably about $130 million or, or so in revenue. And we've been blessed to go from, you know, $100,000 in debt to uh, a multiple, almost seven-figure income annually now. And 
to be debt free and to be able to travel the world. It's just been, it's been absolutely amazing, but I, I'm a 12 year overnight success. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So if, if you could put a definition on prosperity and abundance, RJ, what would, what would that look like for you or how would you define that? I think everyone does define success very differently. And it kind of goes back to a little bit the way you introduced me. It's about finding who you are in God's will for your life. And so I'm a very spiritual person. And I believe that we all are here for a reason and that we have a destiny. And it's finding what our calling is inside of that. And often network marketing comes to us in a very weird way. I never, if you would ask me at 18 when I was going to school for nursing, do you, you're going to be a professional network marketer. I'm not even sure I knew what that meant, but I'd say no. Um, I didn't think that that was for me, even being an entrepreneur, even though I felt from a very early age that the job, this, I felt like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole with everything that I tried to do. So I didn't know I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I knew I had a calling on my life. So success and prosperity and abundance, it cannot necessarily just mean material abundance, but are you achieving emotional abundance, legacy abundance, um, philanthropic abundance? Are you happy in your relationships? Is your health all that it can be? And so uh, if you, not everyone is called to be rich. And there is a little bit of a, a, a gospel or a message out there, especially, you know, since there's so many, the rise of the internet and all these great gurus and videos. And, you know, the truth is we're not, we are not all called to be rich. Some of us are meant uh, to live very meager lives, but in ways of servants, look at mother Teresa. So it's about finding what is your true destiny, your true path. Chances are you are led into network marketing or direct sales for a reason. And you have to find out what that reason is. You know, for me, I, I have certainly been blessed and called to be like a king or queen of the, the marketplace. We've made really great money. And I feel like that is a calling on me is to be able to create wealth. Um, we've been very successful at that. But at the same time, I know that the impact and the abundance we're feeling is so much more than the money. It's so much more. So for me, I feel like it's a very fluid um, and it, it's not something you can just pin down and don't feel bad if you're never the millionaire because God's still working with you. If you're still breathing, you still have a purpose to impact people's lives. Yeah. There, I mean, prosperity really at, at the ultimate level, I think, is about being fulfilled and being on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any morning rituals or evening rituals uh, that you've used to create what you've created? At different times of my journey, I did. Um, so it changes, right? So different seasons of life. Some of you guys are watching this right now. You have young kids. The idea, I say, hey, get up at 5 a.m. and do your miracle morning and da 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 and get your workout out. And you're like, I'm just trying to like get a shower today, right? So like how crazy would it be to me to be like, listen, this is what you need to be successful. But there were a few things that really helped me. So one of the things, um, part of our story was we were really hit hard when the economy crashed in 2008. We, we had a million dollars in real estate. It's me that's still choked up to this day. A million dollars in real estate that was probably worth half of that when the economy crashed. We had a traditional brick and mortar business that was failing and we were several years in back taxes. And so when everything just kind of fell apart, my, my husband had to claim bankruptcy. We ended up having three foreclosures on our name. And it was devastating to move from our you know, semi-custom dream home that we couldn't even afford into a 1950s mid-century modern ranch um, that was on like a busy road and no backyard. And so it was, and we had, you know, I had to sell my car, we were down to one car. And I had a, a mentor at the time, her name is Danny Johnson. And she actually told me to, and I was part of her coaching. She said, I want you to start a gratitude journal. So think of this. If we were at the point where we were bleeding thousands of dollars per month. We were po, <laughs> not, not poor, po. We couldn't even afford the OR. And so we were splitting, give you an idea. We were splitting a can of soup and a hot pocket for dinner every night. Have you ever had a hot pocket, Terry? <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> they have two temperatures, like scalding hot, like hell inferno or frozen in the center, right? And so that was our, and I remember going to the grocery store. I was just talking about Instagram stories um, last night, talking about the fact that it was really humbling going to Whole Foods last night. And I just picked up, you know, like four bags of groceries, like $250 later at Whole Foods, right? But it was humbling because 
I remembered a time where I had to go to the grocery store, shop at the cheap stores, right? The discounted stores, the inexpensive. I couldn't buy organic. I couldn't buy non-GMO. That wasn't a thing. It was sustenance at that point. It was survival. And I had to actually, Terry, numerous times put stuff back. Hmm. And there's nothing more embarrassing, I think, than that because I knew what was in my checking account. I had to check it before I went and I knew I would be over. And so I'd be like, okay, we need to remove some of the items off the bill. And to have that fast forward, to be able to go to any store, get exactly what I want. Like, oh yeah, this special Peruvian grass fed <laughs> ghee, like whatever I'm buying, like this avocado oil, it's like grown on a special mountain. I don't know. So like, I'm buying all this stuff and I'm like, it's so humbling to be able, like, I don't even think of the price. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to think about it. And so it's just, it's just incredible how everything has really dramatically changed when it comes to our, our whole financial situation. So any evening routines that you have done? That so gratitude you journal, the gratitude journal was huge because in that time I was so stressed out that I couldn't think like when you're in that much lack, you can't think of charity. You're the charity. Like right. you, you're just like struggling, like kind of like doggy paddling. And so I started every morning, every night doing a gratitude journal and Josh would do it as well. And it was something, sometimes it was small, Terry. It was like, I was celebrating the new conversation I had with a potential customer or the new distributor that joined our team or the fact that we were in Arizona, we had air conditioning, things like that. That was really huge. Now, um, my life has changed very differently. Here's what I'll say that has remained the same in my best seasons of life is high amounts of personal development. Mm. So spiritual, mental skill, et cetera, like emotional development, all that sort of stuff. But I on average do two to five hours a day and I'm really into podcasts. I'm really into audios, audio books, audible, things like that. Um, because, and, and YouTube, cause there's so much great content on YouTube. I, unless I am just chilling out, I love listening to like classical music. That's like my new jam. Like I'm really obsessed with on my Sonos because it's just so calming and beautiful. But beyond that, I'm throwing on an audiobook or I'm trying, so I'm going through like at least an audiobook or two every single week right now. So it's about consumption. And I figure that, so for me, it's not necessarily a morning thing. It's an all day thing. It's when mm -hmm. I can fit it in. It's when I'm driving. It's when I'm on the treadmill. You know, there are times certainly I want to listen to the radio, but more often than not, a majority of the time I'm trying to change my mindset, grow in my skill, improve my understanding of people and relationships. And that's what this industry is about. Other little things that uh, affect me in a positive way is exercising. So I have a not, I believe that you should have PNNs, personal non-negotiables. And so you have to decide what are your personal non-negotiables for your life, for your systems, for your business. For me, I have personal non-negotiables with my health. One of them is the fact that I do 30 minutes of some activity every single day. It doesn't matter if it's Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter if it's my birthday. It doesn't matter if it's New Year's. Every single day. It might be a walk or two, like maybe a two-mile walk around my neighborhood or going on a quick hike or heading to an exercise class. But I find that when I'm in motion, then the energy and cellular, like my cellular buzzing happens. So come up with personal non-negotiables that are healthy habits, and that will be huge for you. But not like any specific morning routine. I don't have, you know, there's so many people, they're so regimented. That's not me at all. But I just try to do enough good stuff to put me in a positive state physically and emotionally. Awesome. Awesome. Has there been a book, RJ, or an item uh, over the years that you find yourself gifting to people? Oh my gosh. Besides the Bible. Um, no, not any specific. So I, I am a bookworm. Um, what I do love is I, people are asking like, do you have a book recommendation for me? I'm like, well, what do you want to learn? <laughs> so, so I was like, I, yes, I have many, you know, I have like a hundred right here on my, on my iPad. Like, well, what do you want? What do you want to learn? So it kind of starts with that. Um, I have a, t a few favorites that have impacted my life. One of them is Lincoln on leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, sometimes you read a book at the time in your life when you need it. I was going through massive chaos in a business that ended up kind of crumbling and failing underneath me. And um, in that, and it's so funny because it was so, so less dramatic than what Lincoln had to go through in his presidency. But it, it, there's a lot of books written on Abraham Lincoln on his biographies and his, and the, his life and all that. 
his marriage, but very few on his leadership style. So if you're wanting to grow as a leader, and that's what network marketing is, it's leadership and influence, that would be a top book. I also, um, I'm a huge fan of John C. Maxwell. I had an opportunity to be personally mentored by him for a year. Um, so I got to be in round circle meetings, had breakfast with him one-on-one -on -one several times. Um, the best $12,000 I ever spent by far. Um, and so he has 15 laws of growth, 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Those are great ones to start with. Um, great leaders ask, or good leaders ask great questions. There's really, you cannot go wrong. I think he's written over 80 um, best-selling books at this point, um, like 30 million copies sold. So grab something from John C. Maxwell. He is absolutely, absolutely dynamo. But there's so much. I mean, I just, I, I couldn't say enough of, there's so many ideas. Yeah. Uh, has it been a purchase for $100 or less in the last six months that has had a positive impact on your life? Oh my goodness. Um, maybe not a hundred dollars, but you know what? There's small things. Um, one of the, one of my favorite things that I have is a Sonos. So I believe music changes the feeling of the room. It can totally get you out of a funky state. Um, and so much so when people are in that lax state, we're talking about prosperity where they can't move forward. It's their state. They're laying down, they're on the couch, they're moping, they're in a bad mood put on some like great music, you know, as much as I hate the song happy because <laughs> I'm happy, then, you know, that's so overplayed. I was in the store the other day, they were playing it. I caught myself dancing, right? <laughs> so if you need something, I have a playlist that is like a power playlist that I will put on and I will listen to. So that wasn't, that's was a couple hundred bucks. Another thing that was a couple hundred bucks is one of my favorite purchases was a Roomba. This is a small productivity hack. If you are spending 20, 30, 40, and 60 minutes a, a, a week vacuuming, you are crazy. At this point, like at this point, I charge $1,500 an hour for consulting. So every time I vacuum, I am literally throwing $100 bills down the drain. So an investment of a $600 robotic vacuum that I just have to empty into the little dust basket or whatever. That has been a really huge thing. Um, other things that I really love is anything that's going to help make my brand or business look great. I love, love, love. Last year or a year and a half ago, I bought a ring light for Facebook Lives. Mm, yep. You guys can look this up. My favorite brand is Newer. It's N-E-E -E or Newer, N-E-E-W-E-R. Don't get the Diva Light. It's really hard to put together. The Newer Light brand is awesome. They're 150 bucks, And when you do your Facebook Lives, you'll look airbrushed no wrinkles. It's just absolutely awesome. So I wouldn't say that there's been one specific purchase, but the, the, anything that can make my life a little easier, that can grow my business, that can save me some time or money. Those are usually the things that I, I really cherish. Mm, cool. Okay. Let's shift the conversation a little bit towards business success and the human side. Has there been a time um, recently where you struggled with abundant or prosperous thinking uh, or maybe the last time you went through that and how'd you work through that process? Yeah. Anybody who says that they didn't, like, I want to know, I want to know like, <laughs> Oh, what, how have you cured yourself from lack thinking and, you know, self-limiting beliefs? We all do. The, the top one percenters still struggle with self-limiting beliefs. I believe that every entrepreneur, great entrepreneur suffers from the same thing. It's called imposter syndrome. Hmm. Where you feel like you're not really good enough and su some point somebody's going to figure it out. Like at some point you're going to be exposed. Like you are not really that good or that deserving of the title, the rank of the team or the leadership. And I believe that, I, I believe that most people do, they feel like they're, and as women, it's a different thing too, Terry. Like we simultaneously feel not good enough and too much. <laughs> we feel too much for many people. Like we're just way too much for them, but at the same sense, we're not enough for anybody. And so it's that dichotomy of lies that we get into. Um, one specific example I told you mentioned, I mentioned briefly that my, my previous business had fallen apart. We had put 300,000 customers in our team. Mm -hmm. And the month that I left that company, we had 3,500 on auto ship. One percent. And you got to think about what that does to your psyche when you are not only are making an extraordinary six figure a month income, but then you just watch your team just absolutely fall apart. Your back office looks like a graveyard. And when you really are a caring person, it's extremely emotionally a burden to see that and to see it was just, um, it was just like casualties everywhere. 
And so I went into massive adrenal fatigue. And in that time, we knew uh, because some specific things happened, we don't need to get into, but really crazy stuff happened. We knew we had to find a new home in this industry. And so that was three years ago. And I'll tell you, Terry, there was numerous times where I questioned, could I do it again? Like, was I, because they were telling me, you're a one hit wonder. You'll never make it to the top again. You won't make it without us. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, these were, these were what my previous leaders were telling us and talking about everybody that was leaving that company. Oh, they're going to fail. They're going to, you're, you know, if you leave, you're going to be nothing. And so, so part of that, you start to start, you start to in, in take that. But I learned a really great tip in emotional stability it is okay to internalize something, but don't personalize it. And so just because like I was hearing it, I was receiving it. And then I had to make my own thoughts and say, you know what, is this true? And the answer was, no, it wasn't true. I don't declare that. I'm not speaking that over my life. I know I'm not a one hit wonder. I know that I have the skills and ability to go and rebuild something bigger, better, you know, faster, more retentive and sticky and, and feel better than I ever did over here. And so just because somebody in your life is speaking death into you or is a skeptic or a hater, it doesn't mean that you have to own it. You don't have to wear it like a coat or like a cloak or like a scarlet, like L, like a loser. You know, mm -hmm. you can go and change your mindset and you can become a winner. And part of that is also looking back at the times in your life when you won. So when I looked back at, you know, I was getting all this, I was like, oh my God, can I really do this? Am I a really good leader? Maybe it was my leadership why these people left, and, but that wasn't true at all. Because I, I started going back, I'm like, no, no, no. I began to look back at all the victories I had in my life. Even if you guys have to go back to like your second grade spelling bee when you're the grand champion in Puba at your elementary school, I don't care, but you have muscle memory. And if you find that muscle memory of when you were a winner, when you were a champion, you can go into that state, like literally putting on a victory suit so that you can walk into your new opportunity or the next meeting or the next one-on-one -on -one with a posture of a champion. And so I think that was it. I think that was the hardest time was in that phase of leaving something, having a lot of doubt around me and deciding that I was going to take the risk. Um, and I have the faith that if I did things with the right intention, that God would surely bless me. And he did. Yeah. So it sounds like um, visualization uh, played a pretty important role for you because the, the bad stuff happened. You, you, you had all the, um, the negative uh, energy coming your way. You had this vision. Talk a little bit about um, how you visualized and how you pictured yourself while you're still in the struggle. Yeah, I think vision is important. A man without vision will perish. So you got to know where you go where you want to go. John C. Maxwell says a leader is one who knows the way, who goes the way and shows the way. So I just knew where I wanted to go. Before we started our teams called Team Heart, we decided to create a vision. A vision statement, a mission statement, our philosophy, we call them isms, so things that we stand by. So when we joined, we didn't just sign a distributor agreement. We didn't just order our pack. We created a company. Like, we created a movement, right? And we started sharing that vision with our new team members. And so within, you know, 30 days, we had 500 people, mostly, you know, customers, obviously we're in products. And, uh, and now, you know, three years later, almost 50,000 people on our team, primarily customers. And we did that through vision. We know our goal is a million customers. And when we do that, we'll be a half a billion dollar team. So we knew like, I don't care if it takes me 10 years. It's not on my, my, it's not on me to create the timeline. It's just for me to go and take the action. Mm -hmm. I just have to go and start taking the steps. If it takes me 10 years or 20 years to get to a half a billion dollar team, whatever, I'm not going to stop doing what I need to do. I don't want to confuse vision and goals and set points and destiny with manifestation. There's a lot of people that will likely you know, come into some of your interviews and I don't poo poo you know, the idea of that you can you know, manifest or whatever. Here's what I know. I have studied prosperity. 
I've studied successful people because I, it's like case studies. I'm like, I want to know how do they pay their bills? How do they save money? How do they invest? How do they, you know, read whatever? It's the same thing. What's your morning routine? Like, I want to know, like, let's dissect them. Let's dissect the losers too. What do they do? And so you're able to look at it. But you know, as far as I know, from all these amazing case studies, I've never heard somebody that has gotten to seven figures by sitting at home and manifesting, you know, and just like thinking their way. Even the lottery ticket winner had to get off their duff, get in their car, <laughs> spend the money to get the gas, buy the ticket, come back, check, follow through, and cash in their earnings. There's activity before the result. And so for me, it's knowing where I want to go, but then having to kind of work my way backwards of who do I need to become <laughs> to earn that? to, you know, deserve that, right? To create that. And then what do I need to do logistically? It's the same thing with like any goal. You want to buy a house. Okay, great. There's specific things you have to do to get pre-approved for a house. Not, not only, you know, fixing your credit, removing collections off there, saving for a down payment, doing the market research, um, you know, so on and so forth, finding a mortgage broker. So you can sit there and manifest a house, but your poor butt's going to still be an apartment if you don't take any action to get to your goal. Right. So let's dive a little bit deeper in there. Let's say somebody is stuck financially and let's say perhaps they think they're too old or they've tried uh, to have a business before, whether it be network marketing or whatever kind of entrepreneurial business, what tips um, could you give them to action steps, RJ, to help them get unstuck and go into a more positive direction. Yeah. So stuck is a state. So we can change that through the food that we eat, the water we drink, the movement that we make, and the thoughts that we hold in our mind. Here's a fact. We cannot hold a negative thought and a positive thought in our brain at the same time. So you have a choice to choose what you're thinking about. You have to take your thoughts captive. So you do this through prayer. You do this through intention or journaling. You do this through listening. Like I force two to five hours a day and positive affirming, you know, skill building, mental building, spiritual building activities and lessons and content in me. So I constantly rewire our thoughts. Now, older that you get, the harder it is to rewire your thoughts. Now, just because you're 60 or 70 doesn't mean, but you have to work harder. So you, if you really want to change your life, nobody's going to do it for you. It's taking the ownership of saying, you know what? I have to get unstuck. Nobody's going to come and rescue me. God's not going to come and rescue you. You have to go and build the boat, make yourself, you know, you're just, you're not going to be rescued. You're just going to drown. So to get unstuck, you got to change your state. Sometimes you have to change your environment. You know, something as small as like making a really great, like I have a small, but a really cute home office. I make it adorable. You know, I, 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 I put beautiful things around me. You may not have an office, but maybe you could, you know, open up a, a closet in a spare bedroom, take off the doors and kind of get it all cute. Go to the container store, invest a little money, go to a thrift store or whatever, find a really cheap desk and make it adorable. Put your, you know, your visual, you know, vision board or your car or your dream house or your goals in front of you or your team or your leaders so that you can get in a space where, you know what, this is where I do the do. This is where I do the thing and I feel good doing the thing. Um, another thing to get unstuck is sometimes you got to do the thing before you feel it. So I love Ra Ralph Waldo Emerson, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, says, do the thing and ye shall have the power. So it's a crazy thing is actually doing the thing is the medication for your stuckness. So many people are like, they're looking for the medication, looking for the medication. Like, oh my God, I just, I, I, I know I need to get to six figures. I know I need to make a run in my business. I just don't, you know, oh, I'm just so stuck. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm motivated, da, da, da. No, no, no. You have to do the thing that's unmotivating and then the motivation comes. It's the same thing with working out. The first 15 minutes of every class that I go to, I go to the, like, these 60 minute like muscle and weight lifting classes. It's a bunch of women in there and we're lifting and stuff like that. And the first 15 minutes, I hate it. I'm like, why am I here? I hate it on the drive there. I hate it. I sometimes I sit in my car up until like the last minute when I have to walk into the class and the first 15 minutes, I'm, you know, I'm young, but I'm still like creaky and I'm like, oh, like sore from the last workout. I'm like, I don't enjoy any of this. I hate working out, but I love what working out does for me. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the class, like now I'm warmed up. The motivation is there. And then it's over and I'm like, I'm so glad I did it. So the same thing happens. Sometimes you just have to start doing the thing. You have to fake it. 
You have to fake the positivity. You have to fake the motivation. You have to fake the passion, but then it begins to come. And it's not easy. Rewiring neuroplasticity, uh, looking at the neural pathways of changing beliefs. Um, there is a, a great book by Brian Trans Tracy, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. That is a fantastic book. It talks a little bit about neuroplasticity. And there's, there's a lot more other books um, as well. I was trying to see if I could find my little library, but I have so many. It's just, just like nonstop, like almost oh, <laughs> crazy, crazy books. Um, but they, they will really, uh, oh, what to say when you talk to yourself. Do you know who that's by? What to say when you're talking to yourself? Uh, no, I've heard that book though. That's a good oh, one. Oh my God. It is so freaking good. Um, I'm going to tell you right now by Shad Helmstetter. That's where it really gets into how our brain as a computer works. So yeah. understanding that stuff is a choice, that you have to take personal responsibility of it, that you're gonna have to do a, a likely a multifaceted approach to it through, like I said, nutrition, through you know your habits, through, you know, and then do an audit. What in your life right now is not getting you to your goal? What's in, um, impeding you? What's holding you back? Who's, who's speaking into your life? Who's yapping in your ear? You know, is it the TV? You know, and I know a lot of people that are constantly in a state of anxiety and stress and all they watch is the news. Mm. So maybe shut off CNN or shut off Fox News or MSNBC and get yourself into some personal growth and development and see how your mind begins to change. But just start doing it. Do it before you feel it. Like feel the fear and just do it anyway. Just do it anyway. Right. Let's say, uh, and I'm going to ask this question because you have such a strong expertise online. Somebody is trying to generate leads online, create their branding online, and they just get really overwhelmed with the whole process of it all because it's all new to them. Any suggestions on how somebody can, you know, um, overcome the overwhelm? Overwhelm is also a choice. <laughs> There's two words that I hate, uh, overwhelm and frustrated. Mm. Yeah, I absolutely hate them. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Bless you. We'll edit that out. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. All this new, all the winter plants are all blooming. It's crazy. Okay. So I absolutely hate the word overwhelm and I hate the word frustrated. So those are two things that if you find yourself, maybe you have like a little like a rubber band on your, on your wrist, or maybe you like elicit your, um, your spouse to say, when I say these words, I need you to tell me like, and if you need to get a word out of your uh, vocabulary, ask a spouse, ask a best friend, whoever your kid, whoever, they will tell you. <laughs> the numerous like grammatical things I used to say that were constantly wrong. And my, my dad is very, uh, very well cultured and very well read. He's a genius. So he would get me, he's like, don't say that. And so now if I ever hear anybody else say it, I'm like, ah, I took that out of my language. So, um, but bottom line is if you're overwhelmed, sometimes you have to start with, uh, and get clarity. So confusion is never from God. Confusion comes from a different spirit. So that's, that's something to consider, right? Can God doesn't give you confusion. So sometimes you have to take a step back and get ultra clear of what you want to do. So like, again, it's the vision of where you want to go. What is the calling on your life? Where, okay, great. What are my 60, 90, 90 day, six months projections and then what I recommend is you make a, what I call emotional insurance policy. So you take the time and you write out why, why do you want to do this business? Why does it, why do you have to hit this income? What is that going to do for you? Why is it important? Like you have to write it out. And sometimes it's numerous pages long. It's your emotional insurance policy. So when your why is strong, the how becomes clear. And so if you're overwhelmed, you're caught up in the how. How am I going to do this? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to build a business? How am I going to generate leads? When you are so caught up and so deeply intertwined with your why, I mean, you're just like, you'll be unstoppable because you will stop at nothing. You will figure it out. You'll be so clear because you know where you're going and all of a sudden the answers, the solutions are going to start coming to you. Awesome. Great advice. Great advice. Okay. Let's shift to a little lighter subjects. Let's say you had the ability, RJ, to send everybody around the world a text message tomorrow morning about prosperity and abundance. What would that say? 
oh my goodness, that they deserve it, that they deserve it. It's, um, it's the most heartbreaking thing with coaching and leading at a high level is how many people have absolutely, and myself included at times, have believed the lie that we are unworthy of success mm. or unworthy of the, the platform that we are building or the impact that we're going to have. And so it would just be encouragement to know that they matter that they are loved and that they are worth it and that they, that it is okay. Especially I deal with a lot with women. Most of my team is women. Um, and to tell them as busy moms and crazy wives and just all the stuff that's going on, that it's okay to invest in them, that it's okay to do the self care. That's okay to, you know, invest in the, the, the courses or the growth or to do this and, and they're deserving of it. Many, many people, um, even the people that seem the most confident massively battle with self-worth. It goes back to the imposter syndrome as well. And so I think that would be the message that I'd have for people is just to know that their life matters, that the work that they do is good work, and that, that they can create an, a really incredible imprint on this world while they're here. Mm. Awesome. Love it. Uh, is there an unusual habit or thing that you love? Uh, yes. <laughs> We're talking business. <laughs> anything, anything. Okay. So random little thing is I am obsessed with graphics and slide decks. So it's so funny. We joke, um, I have some, several co-founders in my team and we all have different skill sets. I build all the systems and the websites and the PDFs and anything graphic or videos or whatever, and all of our slide presentations. And, um, one of my co-founders is my business partner is the, I call her the trainer. I call her the CEO, the chief entertainment officer of our, of our team. <laughs> and, uh, so Tar is good for training and speaking and being a monkey. And then what does Rachel do? Rachel is the CIO, CMO, you know, CTO. Like I do everything else, right? But if I could literally just sit there all day and make beautiful graphics for Facebook and make beautiful slide presentations for our next training on Monday night, that is my happy place. Like, is that not spoken like the truest introvert ever? Like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Let me just make things pretty. I love it. I love it. Um, is there a mantra that you have or say to yourself often? Um, you know, I think I have different brand statements, messages, philosophies. Um, one of the most important ones when I started Team Heart three years ago was our, our brand message is everyone matters and everything matters. Mm. And so it's on our t-shirts, it's on our website, it's, you know, trademarked. And when I think about that, it's everyone matters, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, performance, whether you're the hottest recruiter or just somebody coming in and putting a customer in once a year or just enjoying the products, everyone matters. And that's really based on my previous experience of being in a performance-based acceptance company where you were only loved by what you're producing. And as soon as you weren't, you were out of here. I was a golden child until I wasn't, I wasn't healthy enough to work anymore. And then I was kicked to the curb. Um, mm. just like that. Um, so abolishing performance-based acceptance is a passion of mine. Um, and so I think about that and then everything matters, meaning it's a state of integrity. So it's showing up every day to your business with excellence and diligence. How are you showing up to your phone calls, to your presentations? This is why I'm like maniacal on the slide decks and like everything matters. You know, the fact that it looks good, it feels good, you know, small things make a difference. And I feel like if everyone is like the compound effect by Darren Hardy, like you make small little things, it can really improve the experience for your team. It's this higher level leadership now we're getting into, but I, I really, I think about everything like our team events. What do the banners look like? What is the music when they come in, when we do a Zoom? What is our, you know, our conversations on the Zoom? What are they experiencing? What are the promos that we run? Um, and then everything matters is also, what, what are you doing when nobody's watching? Mm. You know, are you overhyping the products? Are you overhyping the comp plan? Are you making this business sound easier than it really is? I tell people on the presentation, say, listen, this is not easy. It's, it probably will be the hardest thing that you ever do. Um, you know, when somebody you're hosting a local event, like if I hosted like a Scottsdale event and one of my cross line friends brought, you know, invited somebody, um, and he's in Florida and their prospect is in Phoenix. Um, and that person wants to join me cause I'm the host of the meeting. 
what do I do? How do I approach that? It's really leading with integrity. And it was really a wonderful thing, Terry. God has a sense of humor because I named my team, Team Heart. And this, this is my tribe. You got to understand like, this is the most important people to me in my life. And so when I think about Team Heart and we have everything matters, everyone matters, how do I have to show up every day? How do I have to treat every distributor? How do I have to treat the leader that's driving me nuts? You know, like, cause it happens. And so you want to elevate yourself, set a different bar, raise your standard. And so for me, I think that's, if I were to think about something that I really, I really live by, um, I have a beautiful other things. I, I wake up, I have a beautiful picture, um, giant, right? When I wake up, it's the first thing I see, it says grateful every day. And um, the first thing I say every morning is rejoice. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made rejoice and be glad in it. And so my brain is like always focusing on like, be glad, be grateful, because I'm a pessimist. Very few people will admit it, but we're, science shows that we're bent. We're either bent towards optimism or pessimism. Mm -hmm. So it has taken me, and I still work on it every day for 12 years, because I'm bent more towards what would go wrong. I'm the person that as soon as, you know, my quarterback has thrown two pick sixes, I'm like, the game's over. It's not even halftime, right? And I'm just like, that's just who, that's just who, how I was wired. But I'm choosing a different and more abundant outlook and lens. So those are just a couple of random things. I hope somebody got something. From I, I love it. That's, that's uh, pretty awesome. It really reflects your character and who you are. And that's why you have created the success that you have. So uh, I just I mean, want to say thanks. Terry, if you just love people and you serve them and you show up every day with the intention of blessing them, making a difference in their lives, it's incredible the influence that will be bestowed onto you. Mm. And so I take it very, very, very seriously. And I, it's constantly in my meditation of the sense of putting other people first because I'm a very selfless person. And if any of you guys don't believe that you are, you know, it's, <laughs> like, wow, I just cannot wait to study your life. But I, I am very selfish. And so for me, it's like constantly, like, I just want to serve. I want to love. I want to give back. And that's, that's, it's, it's been a change. It's been a shift. You looked at me seven years ago, six years ago. I'm appalled. I'm appalled who I was. I was a bratty nosed 26, 27 year old making a million dollars a year who had never had seen that type of income. And I, I believed all the news about me. I believed all the press. And so God had to humble me. And I always say, I love Wayne Dyer. He's so good. Rest, God rest his soul. But um, Wayne Dyer says that in your morning of your life, it's all about me. And in the afternoon of your life, it's about we. So if we're ending with this, guys, I want you guys to understand that the more that your life becomes a shift of impacting other people and the more the shift of the gratitude for that ability to do so, and the opportunity that we have in front of us and seeing what we do have and not focus on what we have not, that's when your prosperity begins to change. Mm. Well, that's um, powerful stuff right there. And I just want to say thank you for thank you for your time. I know you're super busy, but more importantly, thank you for being you. You're a, you're a light uh, in the industry, which we need one that's going to shine for a long, long time. So um, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to get in touch with you, RJ, what's the best way for them to do that? So the best way, two ways, number one is Facebook. So if you go to, just go to Facebook and it's just type in Rachel Jackson, I'm the first one that comes up. So over 300,000 followers on my page. So go check me out there. Um, you can also get a lot of really great ideas of how I've really done well on Facebook. So you get a lot of great strategy there. I have some free trainings as well, teaching you branding and lead generation because that's, I'm an internet network marketer. And then really the best way though, if you really want to connect and be my friend is Instagram. So my user or my handle is wealth with Rachel. That's Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L. So wealth with Rachel is my handle, my username. And that's more of the behind the scenes. I call Terry, I call my Instagram, my reality show. So if you want to see more behind the scenes of my life, the business that we're running, the dogs, um, the travel, I do little mini lessons and tips. Um, that's really probably the best place to come and join the conversation. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much again for sharing that. Hopefully, my friend, you got some value out of uh, the conversation with RJ. She dropped a lot of gold here. So many tips. I know I sure did. Uh, RJ, thank you again for your time. And uh, my friend, if you want to 
watch this video or some of the other ones, just go to terrypetrovic.com forward slash mentors. And uh, we will share lots of tips and strategies on how you can create more prosperity and abundance and success in all areas of your life. Remember this, my friend, you have a choice. Make it a better than terrific day and a prosperous one because you absolutely deserve it. Until next time, bye-bye for now.